Okay, yeah. So today we are going to be talking, starting the next unit, which deals with a super cool, super cool compound water. Okay, so this is actually chapter 13. Uh, this first section dealing with the properties of water, I'm going to actually split into two separate lectures. So today we're just going to be doing part one, which talks a little bit about the water molecules in general and some of the bonding involved in them. And then tomorrow we will get into more detail on the different properties of water and talk about how those properties of water are actually due to how water molecules are set up in the first place. So 13.1, uh, uniquely water. So, water. Everybody knows what water is, right? Good old H2O. We all know what it is. I got these really, really, really cool little molecules of H2O that we're going to, well, we would have played with, but I'm going to do some stuff with these to show you. Um, usually when we think of water, we think of it as a solid or a liquid or it's a gas. What? Yeah, water is super cool because on this planet, it's all three ways. It's the only thing that is abundant in all three states of matter. So it's super duper cool. Most people think of it only as a liquid. Okay. We look at it as ice because we spend half of the year looking at frozen lakes. Uh, but most places don't have that. So most often thought of as a liquid. Solid water ice uh, occurs in the glaciers, the ice caps. Uh, it's a huge reservoir of fresh water. One of the problems right now with the ice caps melting is the fact that we are losing a ton of fresh water. And as those glaciers melt and the ice caps melt, we actually change the salinity of the oceans, which can be bad <laughs> for the critters that live there. But most of the ice and most of the fresh water actually on this planet, most of the fresh water on the planet is in the glaciers and in the ice caps. It's frozen in ice. Uh, gaseous water, that's steam or water vapor, uh, found around geysers, hot springs, in the atmosphere, where it plays a role in determining weather. I mean, if we didn't have water vapor in the atmosphere, we would have no precipitation. We have no rain, snow, any of that kind of stuff, which would be obviously extremely bad. And like I mentioned, it is the only thing on Earth that exists in large quantities, all three common states of matter, which is part of the reason why water is so cool. Uh, water is also very unique because most substances are more dense as solids than they are as liquids. Most things, if you go from the liquid to the solid, as those molecules come closer together and get condensed down, and they come closer, it gets more dense. Water is very different. Um, and a lot of it has to do with the structure of water itself. Okay, so when water freezes and becomes solid, all those little molecules, they come together um, and it actually creates air pockets. So there's little air pockets in there so it does spread out a little bit. Um, so water becomes less dense as a solid than a liquid, so ice will float. If ice didn't float, it would kill all of the critters in our lakes, in our ponds. Um, it would be very, very bad. So the fact that as it comes closer together and it forms air pockets, and I think when I have, when I'm set up with a different camera, I'll show you guys with the model here what that looks like. Um, it becomes less dense, it forms. Density, if you remember, is mass over volume, okay? So your mass doesn't change, but in this case, the volume does. Ice's volume becomes larger, which is why if any of you guys have ever had a can of pop or a bottle of water or something in your car and it's froze, you may notice it bulges out because water does expand when it freezes. Ah, so the structure of the water molecule, which is part of why I'm recording the lesson this way, because I do want to use a little piece of the whiteboard here that I can show you guys. Um, so oxygen is electronegative compared to hydrogen. Oxygen, meaning oxygen likes 
electrons. It's going to have a partially negative charge on it. It's going to hold the electrons a lot closer to it than that hydrogen is going to. Um, so it is electronegative compared to hydrogen. So it holds those electrons closer, creating a partial negative charge, leaving hydrogen with a partial positive. So that is written like this. So you have your oxygens and your hydrogens. The oxygen has a partial negative charge on it. The hydrogens have a partial positive charges. Okay, meaning oxygen holds the electrons closer to it. Um, so these slightly positive charges on the hydrogen atoms cause the molecule to take on that bent 3D shape. And remember we did um, the molecular model lab and you should have seen it doesn't go straight out. Okay, it has a bent shape in the three-dimensional world. Okay, which is why I always draw it this way with that bent idea. The other reason for that is because if you remember, oxygen has two sets of lone electrons. Okay, so everything wants to be as far apart from each other as possible. So it gets, that's three-dimensionally the best or most stable way it does it. The type of bond with unequal electron share is called a polar, polar covalent bond. Polar meaning that it has slightly positive charges and slightly negative charges. If something is polar, it has slight charges to it. Think about the poles of a magnet. You have a positive pole and a negative pole. Okay, same idea. So it is po polar. It's covalent. It's a covalent bond, but it is polar because there is a slightly negative charge on the oxygen and a slightly positive charge on the hydrogen. Um, it's also sometimes called a dipole molecule because there's two poles, dipole, positive side and negative side. Okay, so it's also sometimes called the dipole. Molecule has positive and negative poles. Hydrogen bonding. Um, this is a big part of how water does what it does. Uh, and we'll talk about this a bit more tomorrow and how it relates to some of the physical properties of water. So hydrogen bonding, the slight charges on the oxygen and the hydrogen create an electrical charge system, which causes the oxygen atom of one to be attracted to the hydrogen atom of another. So if I had another water molecule here, Try purple. So I'll put another water molecule here. Again, slight negatives, slight positives. You'll notice right here, this oxygen is slightly negative, this hydrogen is slightly positive. There are a lone pair of electrons right here on that oxygen. So this hydrogen and those lone pairs of electrons will actually bond together, will actually stick those two water molecules together. It is referred to as hydrogen bonding. Because that hydrogen is slightly positive, it will be attracted to lone pairs of electrons and they will bond together, they will hold together. Um, these connections are fairly strong because you have, in a sense, like a semi-ionic bond happening because you have that slight positive charge and those negatively charged electrons holding those molecules together. Um, so it's called hydrogen bonding. Atoms that can form hydrogen bonds include oxygen, fluorine, nitrogen. It's things that have those lone pairs of electrons that can hook on to a hydrogen, okay? So again, hydrogen bonding happens because this oxygen is slightly negative, the hydrogen is slightly positive. Oxygen has the lone pair of electrons on it, so that hydrogen, that slightly positive hydrogen is going to hook on 
to those lone pairs of electrons on that oxygen, creating a fairly strong bond called a hydrogen bond. Okay, so I'll step out of the frame for a minute so you can see this. So slightly negative, slightly positive hydrogen. The hydrogen will hook on to that lone pair of electrons on that oxygen, creating a bond right here called a hydrogen bond. Um, molecules that form hydrogen bonds, oxygen hydrogen groups, the OH in molecules tend to promote these hydrogen bondings because that oxygen holds it a bit more. Okay, so you get those slight charges. Oxygen's electronegative enough to attract hydrogen single electron so strongly that the uh, hydrogen atom almost becomes an exposed proton. It almost becomes like by itself. He's like, I want an electron, I want somebody with me. Um, so that's why it, it naturally occurs. In pure water, each water molecule may form hydrogen bonds with four other water molecules. Okay, so here, I'll come closer to the camera. You can see I have the, wait, I only have three here. One, two, three, four. So here you can see the hydrogen bonding. So I have the water molecule in the middle. The white on these, the white are the hydrogens, okay? So each hydrogen is gonna hook onto an oxygen, the red one, of a neighboring molecule. And then those lone pairs of electrons on that oxygen, there's two pairs of lone, two sets of lone pairs. Each lone pair is going to hook onto a hydrogen of a neighboring molecule. So you have in the center, you have one, two, three, four different molecules that can hook onto them. Okay. Uh, alcohols, organic compounds that contain the OH um, can also form hydrogen bonds. Biological molecules such as proteins, nucleic acids, and carbohydrates also have the ability to form hydrogen bond networks. Those hydrogen bonds in our molecular compounds like DNA, protein, etc., decide that shape of that molecule, which he sense uh, decides what the job of that molecule is going to be. If you have any questions on any of this stuff, please, please, please let me know. Uh, call me on my office hours. Let me know if you need help. I'll tutor you one-on-one -on -one, uh, the best way that I can. But you guys need to talk to me. Thanks.